Welcome to all of our JDS students, faculty, staff, and you, the viewer, that has come to join in with our chapel service. Even in this virtual space, we still feel the presence of God right with us. This whole month, the month of April, we've been talking about the power of spiritual preparation. And what better way to prepare for the word of God that's coming soon than to open our chapel with worship. Worship that reminds us of who God is and who God is to us. So I invite you in whatever sacred space you might be in right now to join in with us and worship the Savior. Lift up holy hands unto the King, for he is worthy to be praised. Let's worship. Let us pray. Dear Lord, your word says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. So Lord, we humbly ask you to guide us in estimating our days accurately. Please help us understand the number of days we have, how quickly they pass, and the certainty that they will eventually come to an end. Lord, we also ask for wisdom in considering how our actions today will impact our future state of being. We pray that you grant us the ability to live our lives as if we knew when it would end. Although you have wisely hidden the time, manner, and circumstances of our passing through this life, we trust that you can help us make the most of every moment as if we had a clear view of our future. Finally, we ask that you give us the strength and courage to act as if we had such a view so that we may live with purpose and wisdom each day. Thank you, Lord, for your guidance and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, family. Pastor Winfield here again, and I would like to bring us to this contemplative moment, this moment in which we think about how life maths for us so that we can gain more wisdom. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, the 90th chapter, Lord, teach us to number our days so that we can apply wisdom. It is the implication that we are called to not just count our days, as we're counting days and weeks and months and, and years, but to number them. What it implies is that it helps us to be able to take time and every day and every moment that we have as a time that is filled with the purposes of God and the pursuits of God, that we just don't, do not allow for time to just march into our lives and march away without attaching to it some level of significance. See, every day, should be significant and so we should live it not passively but intentionally purposefully let's pray father we love you and thank you so much for this day and for the moment that you've given to us so that we can number our days so that we can feel this day that you have given to us and every other day thereafter with purposeful and intentional living now, Father, every day moves us closer to the day of Pentecost, the day in which we commemorate the receiving of the Holy Spirit. And so we ask and pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would reveal to us the significance of every day of our lives, now, henceforth, and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Miracles shall follow them that believe. Nothing shall be impossible to them. Signs and wonders come to those that have faith. So shall it be in Jesus' name. So we say manifest, manifest, manifest here in this place. Do it again, Lord. 
You're the same God today you were before. And we believe you even more. Show us your power, Lord. Prove every doubt and to be wrong. For you are Jesus. And miracles you perform. God, we thank you that we see your goodness right here in this land. And we praise you for what you've already done. Let's say miracles. Miracles shall follow them that believe. And nothing shall be impossible. Signs and wonders. We've got to have faith. So shall it be. Jesus' name, we declare manifest. Show up now, right before our eyes. Do it again. You're the same God. You 
unleash your faith. Come on, the word is coming to pass all things. Come on, it's touching down. Do it again. One more time. You got all power. I have the faith. Nothing's impossible. Say. So we're going to release this. Say, do it again. Say, do it again. You're the same God today. You were before. Yay. Come on, what he did for somebody else in this room, he can do it for you. Come on, show us. Prove even the doubter in me to be wrong. Come on, who is he saying? For you are Jesus. For you are Jesus. For you are Jesus. You are the chain breaker. And miracles you perform. And miracles you perform. Come on, somebody lift up a shout. Let us arrest our thoughts, arrest our mind to this understanding that God would want to prepare us for what he has in store for us. So open up your hearts now to the possibilities that his presence provides. Would you pray with me? Lord, we confess that you have been such a constant help and consistent provider, protector, deliverer, and source of strength for us. You are the rock of ages. From everlasting to everlasting, you are our God. You have been faithful toward us in seasons of trial and temptation, and even in our times of triumphs and victories. We cannot praise you enough for upholding us and steadying us as we navigate this life's journey, trusting that your plans for us are good and our steps have been predestined and ordered according to your divine will and purpose. We thank you for keeping us yesterday and today, and we know that you will keep us forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture text today will come from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 14. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but Lord, O oh Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, and I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well.
Good afternoon, I am Elder Christy Dobbins and I'm excited to be here with you today for Chapel for Jake's Divinity. I am extremely appreciative to our Chancellor, Bishop Thomas Dexter Jakes, and to our President, Dr. Felicia Ford, for the opportunity to stand before you today in this sacred space. My assignment today uh, can be found in the book of Psalms, chapter 90, verses 1 through 12. And while we won't read all 12 of those today, um, I want to underscore that we will speak primarily from Psalms 90 and 12. My assigned title today is The Wisdom of Life Mathing. I'm going to say that again, the wisdom of life, mathing. Now, that term mathing may be something that's unfamiliar to some of you, as it was to me. But as I began to search and research, I found that the term mathing is a, a colloquialism or a slang term that young people use these days when they say, the math is not mathing. And what that really means when you do the due diligence to study it out, it means something doesn't add up. So this title today, The Wisdom of Life, but something is not adding up. If I were to have a subtitle, that title would be Wisdom is Our Teacher. And so I want to talk about this verse, Psalms 90, verse 12. I'm going to read it for you in your hearing. It says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Now, this psalm is different from many of the other psalms because all of us know that David wrote almost all of the psalms. But this particular psalm, Psalm 90, was written by Moses. Uh, psalms is the longest book in the Bi Bible. There are 150 poems uh, in the book of Psalms, which are broken up and divided into five books when you study it. And this 90th psalm, is the beginning of the fourth book. This book was written by Moses, which also lets us know it is one of the older Psalms. It is written before David. And so this Psalms is a, important to our lives and how we live out life today. I'm going to read that to you again as we talk about wisdom being the teacher and what Moses was really saying. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Moses is talking to the Lord and he is asking the Lord to teach us to number our days. Now, when we think of that word number, I don't want to confuse it with the word count. Moses is not asking God to teach us to count our days because to count would to be implied, we are just concerned with chronological time, maybe how long we live, uh, if we live 70 years, if we lived 120 years. But he is saying, teach us to number our days. When we begin to study deeper into what numbering really is, it is not an effort to live a longer life. It is a, an effort to live a, a more, a life that is filled with intentionality and purpose. It is a life that you live according to the will and the plan that God has for you. So Moses is saying to God, as he started in this Psalms 90, he started off saying, you are the God of all generations. And he begins to recount some of the things that the children of Israel have encountered and their inconsistencies. However, throughout all the generations, God was consistent. He is looking to a God who lives outside of time who resides in eternity and asking him to help us, those of us who, who are humanity, to live our lives as the Father has lived purposefully and with intention. So he says, teach us, Lord, to number our days. To number our days sometimes can be confusing. Uh, sometimes we think busyness is numbering our days, but you can be busy and actually your life not be fruitful. So when we talk about numbering our days, it's a life on purpose. It's a life with intentionality. It is being a good steward of every day. 
Jesus says it this way when he is given the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, give us this day our daily bread. When God sends you that daily bread for each day, we have a responsibility to steward and to manage that which he has put into our hands. This topic of numbering and being intentional is not just seen in this scripture. It also, this topic with numbering and being intentional is always accompanied by or even preceded by wisdom. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs chapter four that wisdom is the principal thing uh, so therefore, we need to get wisdom. The book of James chapter 1 verse 5 tells us if anyone lacks wisdom, let us ask God for it who give it to us, gives it to us liberally. So wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is important and significant if we are going to number our days, if our days are going to count, if our days are going to be purposeful and with intention, if our days are going to be in alignment with the will, with the purpose, and with the plan God has intention for us from the foundation of the world, it all begins with wisdom. Wisdom is a teacher. Wisdom shows us how to apply the knowledge that we have acquired over the span of time. Wisdom is not just natural knowledge, but there is supernatural wisdom that we can receive through the Holy Spirit that helps us lead a life that is pleasing in the sight of God. I'm going to run to the New Testament to underscore what Moses was really saying to the Lord when he said, teach us to number our days. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 and 16 say, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. I read that to you in the King James Version. But in the New Living Translation, the B clause of this says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. And the B clause says, taking advantage of every opportunity. In order to number your days, you and I must take advantage of every opportunity that God puts before us, which is why it is important that we seek and we ask him for wisdom because wisdom will lead and guide us in the ways of the Lord. Uh, James chapter 4 verses 14 says, Whereas ye know not what ye shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time. Let's stop there and, and talk about that for a moment. James is underscoring that life doesn't last long. You, no matter how long you live, life is but a vapor. He says, it appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. James is echoing the sentiments of Moses when you read earlier in that passage in Psalms chapter 90, and Moses begins to say that a thousand years with the Lord is uh, on earth is as one day. A thousand years on earth is as one day with the Lord. James is echoing that sentiment by saying that life is but a vapor. Proverbs 3 and 13 says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Now, I know people seek uh, happiness all the time. Uh, people generally seek happiness, not realizing that happiness is tied to what is happening. But the joy of the Lord is available at all times. But even for those who are seeking happiness, the Bible has a solution. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Wisdom is our teacher in every area of our life. Wisdom is attached to even our, our, our mental stability or our emotional health as we are navigating life. Colossians 4 and 5 says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Much like that verse in Ephesians, when that redeeming the time is translated, it says, take advantage of every opportunity.
So let's begin to sum this up. Moses is talking to the Lord. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Really, that is the B clause of that verse is talking about cultivating a heart of wisdom. I want to let you know how important wisdom is. Yes, Proverbs 4 and 7 tells us that wisdom is the principal thing and that we should get wisdom. Yes, James 1 and 5 tells us uh, that if anyone lacks wisdom, that all we have to do is ask God who gives it to us liberally and he abradeth not, which means he will not withhold it from us. But I want to go to the book of Proverbs chapter 8 and really read to you uh, the significance that wisdom plays in our lives. When God uh, is, when I talked earlier about God residing in eternity and you and I residing here on earth, which is chronological time. God does not live in time. That's why the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter one says, in the beginning, God. It was not God's beginning, but it was the beginning of this world that God created. And I want to talk to you and let you see where wisdom even played a part or a role even in creation. You and I living here on earth, humanity uh, God being deity, uh, us living on earth, finite beings, God being a deity who is an infinite being. And one of the things that can help us have the mind of God and the heart of God is wisdom. Wisdom existed before you and I were here. Wisdom existed before the world was created. Wis wisdom has been here all along. Let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 8, and I'm going to skip and read multiple scriptures so that we can get a full understanding. If I were sitting down talking to you today, and I were talking to you personally about numbering your days, about being a good steward of that which God has put into your hands, about making every day count, about not just counting a day, but having a quality of a day. This is not uh, quantitative, this is qualitative. I would speak to you as wisdom does. Proverbs 8 is the heart of wisdom speaking to you and I. Starts off saying, doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She, referring to wisdom, standeth in the top of high places by the way in the places of the paths. She, referring to wisdom, crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, this is wisdom, and my voice is to the sons of man. I'm going to skip down to verse 21, or verse 20. This is Proverbs 8 and 20, and it reads, I Wisdom lead in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I, referring to wisdom, may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I, referring to wisdom, was set up from everlasting, from the beginning over ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was, I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest parts of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, wisdom is speaking and saying, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him. Wisdom is telling us I've been here all alone. I was with God when he created this world. I was with God when creation was formed. I was with God, wisdom, being wisdom, was with God before the hills and before the seas. This is why Moses says, teach us to number our days so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. I wanna challenge you today 
as we navigate life, um, as we stated in the beginning, the slang that says the math ain't mathing, meaning everything is not adding up. But if you apply wisdom to your life, not only will it add up, but your days will count. God wants us to number our days. He wants us to be a steward of everything that he's put into our hands to do. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that we are to lean not into our own understanding, to acknowledge him in all our ways, and he will direct our paths. Many of us make many plans, and we have ambitions, and we have desires that we have not placed into alignment with the plan and the will of the Father. I beseech you today to lean into wisdom, to begin to seek wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. If you need wisdom, if you lack wisdom, and there is an area in our lives where each of us could apply more wisdom. If you heard in Proverbs 8, wisdom said, if you cry unto me, I will even give you substance. Wherever there is a deficiency in your life, I surrender or submit to you today, there is a lack of wisdom. When we make decisions of our own accord, when we choose to count our days rather than numbering our days, and we move without acknowledging the Father, the creator, the ruler, and sustainer of the universe. When we make decisions with our personal lives, whether it's with our families, whether it's with our careers, even whether it's with our ministry vocation, when we make these decisions outside of wisdom, we are making them outside of the will of God for our life. I want to repeat. I'm going to repeat again because repetition sometimes brings information from your conscious mind to your subconscious. So I want to repeat in your hearing that wisdom is the principal thing. That the Bible says, if anyone lacks wisdom, ask God who give it to us liberally. Here we have Moses, who was the, one of the greatest leaders in the Bible, calling out to God, saying, teach us, God, to number our days and that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Wisdom is our teacher. Wisdom can be our guide. Wisdom can be uh, the, 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 the confirmation that you need. When you ask God for wisdom and when you seek the word of God, which is filled with wisdom, you will begin to number your days. And those days will not just be numbered for you, but it will be numbered for your children and for your children's children. When you begin to have intentionality and purpose attached to each day that you live, it won't matter if the math is mathing. It will matter that your days have been numbered. Wisdom is the principal thing. Out of all of your getting, get understanding. Teach us, Father, to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Thank you for spending this time with me. My prayer for you is that you will seek wisdom like never before. You will seek wisdom in the places and the areas where you believe you already know the answer. You will seek wisdom in the areas where you believe you already have expertise. You will seek wisdom even in the areas that you feel you are experienced. When we seek wisdom, we will begin to number our days and our days will have a lasting impact on the generations to come. God bless you, and may the Lord be with you. In Jesus' name, thank you. Father, we could ask you for anything today. But Father, our focus today is to ask you for wisdom. Let us be wise in our decisions. Let us be wise in our going in and our coming out. Let us be wise in the things of you. Let us be wise with our family, with our finances. Let us be wise even with our faith. Father, with this prayer of wisdom, we seal it with this blessing that, Father, with wisdom, you have also attached an understanding. So, Father, I thank you and I love you for this moment here. 
to where we dedicate our hearts, our bodies, and our minds toward wisdom. Specifically, wisdom concerning you. We love you. We thank you for this moment. Sanctify the rest of this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, family, <laughs> that's all the time that we have for today. Listen, I hope these themes uh, and these topics that we're talking about in chapels are blessing you. Today, when we are talking about, you know, allowing for the wisdom of God to help us to math our life, because sometimes uh, the math just doesn't add up. But when we look at God's equations, God's algebra, God's geometry, God's trigonometry, his, his calculus for our lives and for our living, I hope and pray that you would receive the wisdom that it takes for you to number your days. Live it intentionally. Let me confer this blessing of understanding and revelation upon you that you've already received, but I confer this blessing that you would walk in it all the days of your life. Father, I pray for my brother and my sister right now that they would walk in the blessing of numbering their days, that they would walk in the wisdom that comes with numbering their days, that every day will be intentional, every day will not be wasted, time will not be wasted, that they will not wake up one morning and decide that they've wasted time. I pray, Father, that even the things uh, that has been done in the past, even by sinfulness or by forgetfulness, oh God, whatever it was, Father, that you would restore the days, restore the time that things have eaten up in their lives. And I pray that they would redeem the time, their present and their future, through intentional and purposeful living. I confer this blessing and this wisdom upon them that they would live purposefully. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my brother and my sister, go forth in peace. Love, serve the Lord. Remember, don't live haphazardly. Live purposefully. Peace.